Hey, kids, what time is it? Great Scott. Howdy, duty time. Date, Sunday, November 13th, 1955, 7.01 a.m. Last night's time travel experiment was apparently a complete success. Lightning struck the clock tower at precisely 10.04 p.m., sending the necessary 1.21 gigawatts into the time vehicle, which vanished in a brilliant flash of light, leaving a pair of fire trails behind. I therefore assume that Marty and the time vehicle were transported forward through time into the year 1985. After that, after that, I can't recall what happened. In fact, I don't even remember how I got home. Perhaps the gigawatt discharge, coupled with a temporal displacement field generated by the time vehicle, caused a disruption of my own brain waves, resulting in a condition of momentary amnesia. Indeed, I now recall that moments after the time vehicle disappeared into the future, I saw a vision of Marty say he had come back from the future. Hey, Doc. Undoubtedly, this was some sort of a digital image. <laughs> Doc, calm down, okay? Just calm down. It's me. It's Marty. No, it can't be you. I sent you back to the future. Hey, Doc, that's right, but I came back again. I came back from the future. Don't you remember last night? You fainted. I brought you home. This can't be happening. You can't be here. It doesn't make sense for you to be here. I refuse to believe that you are here. Doc, I am here, and it does make sense. Look, I came back to 1955 again with you, the you from 1985, because we had to get a book from Biff. So once I got the books back, you, that is the you from 1985, we're in the DeLorean and it got struck by lightning and you got sent back to 1885. 1885! It's a very interesting story, future boy. But there's just one little thing that doesn't make sense. If the me of the future is now in the past, how could you possibly know about it? You sent me a letter. Dear Marty, if my calculations are correct, you will receive this letter immediately after you saw the DeLorean struck by lightning. First, let me assure you that I am alive and well. I've been living happily these past eight months in the year 1885. The lightning bolt that hit the DeLorean caused a gigawatt overload which scrambled the time circuits, activated the flux capacitor, and sent me back to 1885. The overload shorted out the time circuits and destroyed the flying circuits. Unfortunately, the car will never fly again. It actually flew. Yeah, well, you had a hover conversion done in the early 21st century. Incredible. I set myself up as a blacksmith, as a front, while I attempted to repair the damage to the time circuits. Unfortunately, this proved impossible because suitable replacement parts will not be invented until 1947. However, I've gotten quite adept at shoeing horses and fixing wagons. 1885. Amazing. I actually end up as a blacksmith in the Old West. Pretty heavy, huh? I have buried the DeLorean in the abandoned Delgado Mine adjacent to the old Boot Hill Cemetery as shown on the enclosed map. Hopefully it should remain undisturbed and preserved until you uncover it in 1955. Inside, you will find repair instructions. A 1955 counterpart, that's me, should have no problem repairing it so that you can drive it back to the future. Once you have returned to 1985, destroy the time machine. Destroy it? Yeah, well, it's a long story, Doc. Do not. I repeat, do not attempt to come back here to get me. I am perfectly happy living in the fresh air and wide open spaces. And I fear that unnecessary time travel only risks further disruption of the space-time continuum. And please take care of Einstein for me. Einstein? He's your dog, Doc. Einstein, it's what you call your dog in 1985. I know you will give him a good home. Remember to walk him twice a day and that he only likes canned dog food. These are my wishes. Please respect them and follow them. And so, Marty, I now say farewell and wish you Godspeed. You've been a good, kind, and loyal friend to me, and you made a real difference in my life. I will always treasure our relationship and think on you with fond memories warm feelings, and a special place in my heart. Your friend in time, Doc Emmett L. Brown, September 1st, 1885. 
I never knew I could ride anything so touchy. No, no, Doc, it's beautiful. Oh, it's all right, Copernicus. Everything's gonna be fine. I'm sorry, Doc. It's all my fault you're stuck back there. I never should have let Biff get to me. Well, there are plenty worse places to be than the Old West. I could have ended up in the Dark Ages. They will, probably would have burned me at a stake as a heretic or something. Let's look at the map. All right, according to this, the time vehicle sealed off in a side tunnel. We may have to blast. I think you woke up the dead with that blast. Take this camera. I want to document everything. This reminds me of the time I attempted to reach the center of the Earth. I've been reading my favorite author, Jules Verne. I spent weeks preparing that expedition. I didn't even get this far. Of course, I was only 12 at the time. You know, it was the writings of Jules Verne that had a profound effect on my life. It was when I was 11 that I first read 20,000 leagues out of the sea. And then I realize that I must devote my life to science. Doc, check it out. Look at this. My initials! Just like in Journey to the Center of the Earth. That means the time machine must be right through this wall. years, two months, and 13 days. Astounding. As you can see, the lightning bolt shorted out the time circuit control microchip. The attached schematic, schematic, schematic diagram will allow you to build a replacement unit with 1955 components, thus restoring the time machine to perfect working order. Unbelievable that this little piece of junk could be such a big problem. No wonder this circuit failed. It says made in Japan. What do you mean, Doc? All the best stuff is made in Japan. Unbelievable. You know, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a cowboy. But now, knowing I'm going to spend my future in the past, sounds like a wonderful way to spend my retirement years. It just occurred to me, Marty, since I end up in 1885, perhaps I'm now in the history books. I wonder, could I go to the library and look myself up in the old newspaper archives? I don't know, Doc. You're the one that's always saying, you know, it's not good to know too much about your own destiny. You're right, Marty. I know too much already. Better that I not attempt to uncover the circumstances of my own future. Copernicus! Come on, boy! I'll get him, Doc. Copernicus! Copernicus, come on, let's go home, boy. What's wrong? What's wrong, Copernicus? Come on. Come on, let's go home. Come on. Come on. Doc! Doc! Come here! Quick! What's wrong, Marty? You look like you've seen a ghost. You're not far off, Doc. Great Scott. Check this out. Died September 7th, 1885. That's one week after you wrote the letter. Erected in eternal memory by his beloved Clara. Who the hell is Clara? Barney, please don't stand there. Oh, right. Sorry. I gotta get another picture. Shot in the back by Buford Tannen over a matter of $80. What kind of a future do you call that? 